Hello everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense. And we are gonna start a series on Minuteman Tactics. Now, that's gonna be fun and exciting because let's be honest, in general, there are not that many tactics videos on YouTube. So I wanna talk about what this series is gonna be about, uh, what we're gonna cover, and then why we're doing it because I think the why is always much more important than people give it credence for. So the first thing, why are we gonna make this series? Well, the big reason we are gonna make this series is because every time that I've seen videos on tactics on YouTube, which we're gonna talk about what that word means, but every time I see those videos that I can think of, I've only ever seen a carbon copy of what they do in the United States Army or the Marines. That's it, they, they, someone flipped open the Ranger Handbook, pointed at CQB and said, okay, well, the first guy goes here, and the second guy goes here, and these are your points of domination, and that's it, that's how you do CQB. You know, done, moving on. And I think there's a lot of danger in that thinking. The, the first, and in my opinion, the most obvious problem is that the, the tactics that they use in the Army are built around the capabilities that they have in the Army. They have the giant corporate structure of the United States military to support how they do these tactics, right? They have different weapons and equipment and that of course informs their tactics and how they do stuff. Well, you don't have all of that. So not all the time, but there are some modifications that need to be made. And I don't think anybody really thinks that through that I've seen. The second thing, and, and maybe the less obvious point, is you have to remember that in the United States Army or the Marines, your average grunt, your average fighter is 19, maybe 20, maybe 21 years old, right? A lot of these things are built for some 19 year old from New Jersey who's never even seen a gun, let alone fired one, and now you're gonna integrate him into a fire team and you're supposed to put him out on the front to shoot bad guys, right? Like there's different safety checks that they have and there's different modes of operation and modes of control and modes of leadership management that they have because you have a 19 year old who doesn't know anything, and so he requires a little bit more oversight. Now in your crew, maybe you have a 19 year old, but more than likely, you have some middle-aged guys who are probably a little bit more put together as far as their skill sets go and their safety goes. God, I hope so. Uh, if not, let's talk about that. And, and so you are coming from a different place. You have people who choose to do this in their free time, who spend their money to buy their own equipment and training. And, and practice together. That's a totally different genre. That's much more akin to a special forces type setup with highly motivated, highly skilled individuals. Not to say that Minutemen are the same as special forces. That's not what I'm saying at all. There's some significant differences there. Uh, however, it's more akin to that than it is to just some grunt who's just there to serve a couple of years because, you know, he wants his college degree and uh, this is a way to pay for it and he doesn't really care. The big differences in control and leadership and tactics and motivation. And so that needs to be taken into account. So when you start to look at those differences in context, it seems to me that what we need is a better understanding of tactics for the Minuteman. We need a better understanding of what differences there are, what our context is, what that's gonna look like to us, what's our most likely available equipment, what are all these things and how should that therefore inform our tactics? And so that's why we're gonna make this series. So the next thing I wanna talk about is what are tactics? What does that word mean? What I thought it meant when I first started reading and researching and what I think a lot of people think it means is they think it means battle drills, right? They think it means I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna move over here. You know, I'm gonna pew, pew, pew. They're gonna say moving, I'm gonna say move. They're gonna move, then they're gonna pew, 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 and then I'm, we're gonna have that conversation, I'm gonna move. That's tactics. That's not tactics, that's a battle drill. Now, do you need different battle drills in order to accomplish some battlefield movement? Yes, of course, obviously. In order to be effective on the battlefield, you need battle drills, that's why we have them. However, tactics, I, I think, is a real simple definition. It's a common sense solution to a battlefield problem a common sense solution to a battlefield problem. 
So we are going to talk about battle drills in this series, right? Because naming this series uh, Minuteman Battle Drills just doesn't have the same ring to it as Minuteman Tactics. Everybody gets all excited about that word. However, you need to understand that in general, tactics are a, bat a common sense solution to a battlefield problem. And so you might have different tactics that you employ at different times. Your tactics will evolve and change as you get into whatever conflict you get into. You'll have some maybe go-tos, but at the same time, you'll have some other ones that you have to make up and adapt and use, right? Adapt, improvise, overcome, right? So th there are different things that you're going to have to do. And I don't want us to get stuck in this thinking because I think most of us get stuck here where it's like, well, th these are the, the tactics that we use and then everything else is anathema and stupid and doesn't work and it'll get you killed and all this other stuff. And we need to be much more thinking outside the box. Tactics has an art and a science side to it. Uh, the Marines talk about this very effectively, that there is both an art and a science side to tactics. And we need to take both of those into account. And you can't just be all science, like just the battle drills and what we do. And, and you can't just be all art, like, hey man, it's just loosey goosey, right? You have to find that balance about sometimes you need to be more artistic in the situation. Sometimes you need to just do the battle drill. And, and there are different situations that dictate that. And that all comes down to you and your intelligence and your thinking in the moment, right? So we don't want to get stuck in this world where we only think that tactics are what the book says. It's in the manual. That's it. That's where the tactic is. Everything else is garbage and it'll get you killed. That's not true. And, and if you're like, listen, who's this guy and what are all his qualifications and who is he to tell me what tactics are? If you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I read a lot. If you don't, haven't been following and you're new here, you can go look at my tactical book reviews. I read a lot of books. On top of that, if you're wondering what kind of classes has he been doing, because I'm not a military or a police guy, that, that's not my background at all. I have all the classes I've ever been to on my website. You can go check that out. And if at the end of the day, you're like, this guy's full of shit. I don't want to listen to him. You don't have to. Good for you. If, however, you are interested in adapting what the standard military tactics and battle drills and stuff like that are to your context as just an everyday guy, then I think this series is going to be for you. So I would like you to think of this series as kind of like a collegiate course, right? Like a, a grandmaster's course or whatever those, those things are called. Uh, we are going to basically do that and we're going to have a textbook. And our textbook is going to be Max Velocity's uh, Tactical Manual Small Unit Tactics. Uh, I picked this book for a couple reasons. One, uh, he writes it towards everyday people. So he, out of all the tactical books I've read, he has that bent of like, how is this like more for everyday people? Now, I think there are still some things we're gonna, we're gonna tweak and change and whatever because everybody gets their own nuance and it's my YouTube channel, so I get to do what I want. Uh, however, this is gonna be our textbook. And this book has about 10 chapters in it. It has a couple appendices that we're not gonna cover and stuff like that. But we are, I'm going to lecture through each chapter in this book. And I'm going to use this book as a guide. So, depending on how deep you wanna go, you should order this book on Amazon. I think it's 30 bucks. Um, if you haven't read this book, you should anyway. It's really good. Uh, we are gonna use this book as kind of our starting point in our manual. There'll be some stuff we cover, there'll be some stuff we don't cover. I'm not gonna read the book to you, but I am gonna use the chapters as guidelines and as buckets to talk through information. If you don't wanna read the book and just wanna listen to me talk, you can do that too, but you will definitely get the most out of this thing if you read the book in, in uh, conjunction with the actual lecture. As we go through the course, I will pull in different other source materials. I will do the best I can to reference those back to the source materials. Sometimes I won't get to do that because I don't remember where it's from and or it's kind of an amalgamation of things and whatever. But I'll do the best I can to reference you back to the original materials so that if you are interested like me and you wanna go read the footnotes, then you can do that. I'm gonna make several assumptions uh, as we go through this series. The first assumption I'm gonna make is that you are a competent gunfighter. And what I mean by gunfighter there is you've been to a class or 10. You understand how your gun works. You know how to fix it when it malfunctions. You know how to take it apart and clean it. You, in general, are squared away with your gun. You shoot with your buddies sometimes and, and have a general understanding of how to not shoot your buddies, right? There are some basic core competency skills that you have that you can feed then into your tactics, right? You are not a complete new person. If you are a new person, that's fine, go take a class. 
Conveniently enough, I teach classes. Come see me. We'll have a good time. However, I'm making the assumption that you've taken some classes, that, that you understand how the gun works, that you grasp basic safety really well, that you're able to have these core competencies. Otherwise, don't go out and do this stuff without that disclaimer, you know, never do any of this stuff ever. Uh, this is just for academic reasons, blah, blah, blah. One of the other assumptions I'm making is that in general, you're squared away with your kit. If you have not seen my Minuteman gear series, go ahead and watch that. Uh, that'll take you deeper into the kit world. But in general, I'm assuming that that's kind of squared away and you got your mags placed right and your water and your sustainment kit. And in general, you've got that under control. We all know that Kit is a never ending battle and it's, we're all just, we're all chasing the dragon. Let's just be honest. One of the other assumptions I'm making, like I mentioned earlier, is that you and your guys lean more towards that special forces kind of deal. You're not just a bunch of young kids who don't know what they're doing, who need extreme leadership and oversight over you. Uh, rather, you are generally competent. You have some guys that you would trust with your life, that you know they can shoot, you know they can move, you know that they are going to not accidentally do something stupid, uh, but you trust them to make decisions. Because a lot of the ways we're going to talk about this is letting those people be individuals and lead and think and act and not having this extreme oversight uh, over them, often how the manuals call for it. We're not going to necessarily have that extreme oversight and, and uh, real micromanagement of their actions here because we are assuming that the people we're working with are a little bit more seasoned, uh, are a little bit smarter, are a little bit able to more think on their feet because they're a little bit older in life and, and maybe they've done this before, they've thought about this for, before, and or they, they choose to get together to learn to do this. So they're not people that you need to micromanage and just to be trigger pullers, uh, but rather they are thinking fighters. I am assuming you and your crew are a bunch of thinking fighters and therefore our tactics are going to look a little bit different and our battle drills are going to look a little bit different. I look forward to joining you on this series as we discuss Minuteman tactics. Do brave deeds and endure.